I wanted to take some time to go over some of the advantages in detail that I mentioned in the previous video. One of the ways we can use elective functions is to align our field's remainder to the architecture of our CPU. You see, one of the biggest problems working with finite fields is that the arithmetic and multiplication doesn't map natively to the CPU. That doesn't mean the computer can't do it. It just means it takes more processing power. This is such a big bottleneck, actually, that certain encryption standards have been built into the CPU architecture. For example, AES-256. This comes at an enormous expense. Adding something to circuitry is a big deal. I personally think that these kind of extensions into hardware are as pointless as float point compute units. You can actually do everything with integers without losing any performance. And with the extra die space, we could have 128 bit scalar integer units. Anyway, enough of that. Float point units are a thing, and people use them. So, what are we looking at? I've implemented an encryption algorithm and a hashing algorithm using these principles. On the screen, I'm comparing my algorithms to AES-256, an encryption standard, and SHA-256, a hashing standard. This code was compiled with full optimizations using the AVX2 extension. Let's break down some of the immediate advantages that we have using this method. In the four rows selected, 64 bytes are being encrypted. Each row is being encrypted with a different register size. We can see the baseline time for 8 bits, which the performance more than doubles for 16. It more than doubles again for 32. And it's incredibly efficient at a 64-bit register size. If we take a look at AES-256, encrypting 64 bytes, we see that its timing is a little faster than our algorithm at 8 bits. This is actually precisely what we should expect, seeing that the AES-256 algorithm uses a finite field with an 8-bit unit. By increasing the size of our field to match the register size of the computer, we've increased the performance by a very large margin. That's not all. This new algorithm provides double the protection as AES-256. Its equivalent bit rating would be 512. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting that we should use this algorithm in the world. This is a research project, and I understand that security has to be 100%. I'm not a certified encryption expert, so take everything I say with a grain of salt, please. Note the time AES-256 takes to encrypt a 1K block. Here, our research algorithm does the same in half the time or maybe a third of the time. A notable difference in the effectiveness of these algorithms is that AES-256 is using a 256-bit state, whereas the research algorithm I've implemented actually is using an 8096-bit state in a third of the time. So how are we doing this? Well, we're using a field that is mod 2 to the 64th power we're then generating an elective symmetry to implement a function in that field. The only thing we have to be aware of to make this work is that our relative prime, which needs to be avoided to maintain a valid symmetry, is 2. We must be relatively primed to 2. This only really becomes an issue when we're calculating the inverse and also solving matrices. And there are some tricks paying close attention to the patterns that arise within our elective power matrix. And you'll understand exactly what those tricks are.